With Reverend Simon Ampafo, head pastor of Grace Falls Chapel. Do you need direction in life? Are you yearning for a closer walk with God? Are you desiring to be fruitful? The Word of God provides the answers. Feast on God's Word and let the grace of God envelop you as you listen to this life changing message. Be blessed. Verse 1 to 7, I believe, or 6. All right, let's read on. Now, in those days, when the number of disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution of food. All right? It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. All right? From among you, seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business, right? But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Verse 5, take note of 5. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicana, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. Five, six. Whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. All right? Of God spread, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Let's add verse 8 to it, and then that'll be it for tonight. Right. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Amen. Shall we be seated? How to stand out in your generation. Lift your hand and say, I can stand out in my generation. Now make it very positive. Say, I will stand out in my generation. Hallelujah. I see you standing out in the name of Jesus. Now hear me. It is possible for you to stand out in your generation. You were created not to be ordinary or just to be counted among the crowds to be counted among men no 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 you are not born to just grow marry give birth have children travel and die that is no life you are you are more special and you are more relevant to the agenda of god than that you are here on this earth to make a difference and to be relevant to your generation. You are here to stand out. And I prophesy to you as I begin this teaching, I declare that your life will stand out. Your business will stand out. In your family, I see you standing out among your brethren. You shall be the head of among your brothers. 
just like it was prophesied on Joseph, may you be the head among your brothers. In your workplace, I see you standing. Uh, in your business world, I see your business standing out. That is God's purpose for your life. You are here to make a difference. You are here to make an impact. It is very sad for you to go through life and amount to nothing. Never leave a mark in the sound shores of life. It's an error. Hallelujah. In fact, as a matter of fact, in the Bible, apart from Jesus, David's name is the one most mentioned in the whole of the Bible. More than 150 times his name comes out. What a man. A man after God's own heart. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, and David served God's purpose in his own generation and he died. Hear me. I've seen that one of the ways to stand out in your generation is to serve God's purpose. I say serve God's purpose. As long as you are in tandem with God's purpose, you will eventually stand out. You cannot fulfill God's purpose and remain ordinary because you are wired with that function. And as long as you are in purpose, it's just a matter of time. You will spring up and stand out in your generation. Put your hands together for the Lord. You stand out. <laughs> David stood out. And even when Jesus came, many years after he was dead and gone, they would call Jesus and say, Jesus, the son of David. I see that after you are dead and gone, three generations after, four generations after, your name will be still be mentioned because of your impact in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That must be your desire. That it is then and only then that you know that you have really lived. Lift your hands and say, I will live. To bring glory to the name of the Lord and to stand out in my generation. Hallelujah. You know, many years ago, I was living a very ordinary life until I came into contact with one scripture Matthew chapter 8, verse 11. Matthew 8, verse 11. It changed everything. NIV, let's see what the NIV says. All right. And I say to you, look at that. When Jesus is speaking, I say, and I say to you, very powerful. When I contacted the scripture, I couldn't take my eyes off it. And I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Oh, this scripture ministers so powerfully to me i said oh is that the case so it's not only abraham isaac and jacob that will make impact on their generation but the bible says many will come from far and near and they will also take their place in this kingdom of god with abraham isaac and jacob and i said to myself from that day i said i am also taking my place with this great man I said, I'm taking my place. Oh, I rose up with a holy anger in my spirit and said, come what may, by the time my life is over, I am also taking my place with this great man. And I see you also taking your place. I said, you will take your place. See, when we talk about the kingdom of heaven, most of you are thinking about the end time. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven has begun. And people are taking their seats already. People are taking their places already. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I see you taking your place and standing out in the name of Jesus. It ministered so powerfully to me. And I said, Lord, whatever my portion is in this life, I will take my portion. And I declare to you, you will also take your portion. I see you dividing the spoils with the great. He said, you will divide the spoils with the great i see you among the great of your generation because you will understand that you are not an ordinary you are born to stand out and make a difference put your hands together for the lord now having given given you these examples we want to have a character study of a man called stephen who originally 
was not even part of the apostles. He wasn't. No, 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 no. Stephen was an ordinary person walking in the church. Nobody knows him. Nobody recognized him until there was a crisis. The church was growing. There was a crisis. Some people began to complain against others that something negative was happening. And then the apostles came together and said, let's solve this problem. Let's look for some category of men and let them help with serving of tables. And that was the beginning of change for Stephen. Can I talk to you? Anytime there's crisis, anytime there's a problem in the world, somebody is going to take advantage of it to come up. Oh, you don't get it. You don't get it. You don't get it. Listen to me. Anytime around the world in society, when there is a crisis, it's an opportune time for you to come up. That is why I'm excited about this period where they say things are difficult in the world. Things are difficult in Ghana. I see it as a great opportunity for your business to come up, for your finances to come up, for your ministry to come up. Bible says when men are cast down, then thou shalt say the race a lifting up. I see a lifting up for your business, a lifting up for your family, a lifting up for your ministry. Crisis will bring you an elevation. It's a mystery. Hallelujah. Until crisis hit the early church, nobody knew Stephen. But when the crisis hit, they say we are looking for some men. I see them looking for you. I say I see them looking for you in important places. Oh, they are looking for your expertise in high places. He said, let us choose men of good repute. Let's choose men who are filled with the spirit and all the qualification. And verse 6 says, I like verse 6. Look at it very well. And they chose Stephen. Look at the NIV. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and what? And the Holy Spirit. All right. No, hold on. This one says the Holy Spirit. All right. They presented this. No, no, no. Five. Still on five, please. Five. Let's read five. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and also Philip, Prochorus, Nicana, Timon, Parmenas, Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. Seven people. Is that not the case? Seven people. Did you notice that out of all the seven, it was only Stephen? That when they mention the name, they mention some things in addition. Oh, who am I talking to? From today, as you catch this revelation, when they mention your name, may an accolade follow. May there be something special about you. May there be something important about you. May you be significant in your generation. And they chose Stephen. A man full of the Holy Ghost and full of faith. The rest of they just mentioned their name. Yeah, three person will say. They mentioned their name. Tra, ordinary. These seven guys, as a matter of fact, after this mentioning, 18, 85 to 90 percent of them, we don't hear from them again. They become insignificant. They just ended up serving tables. But Stephen, oh, who am I talking to? And Philip, they moved from there to become some of the greatest apostles in the, in the New Testament. Some became evangelists doing signs and wonders. I declare to your life that from today, you will stand out in your generation. Your life will become important and relevant to this generation. When they mention your name, something better will come out. Your name will not be erased into oblivion. You will matter in this life. I say you will matter in this life. You will be relevant to this generation. When they mention you, they say, that guy, there's something about him. That woman, there's something about him. That is significant. That is impact. Put your hands together for the Lord. That's significance. 
Hallelujah. And they chose Stephen, a man full of the Holy Ghost and full of faith. Why should you die and not matter? Why should you live a life for 60, 70 years and when they, it doesn't, it just ended up in grave? I was here some. That will never be your portion. I said, that will never be your portion. No, 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 no. I see you leaving your mark in the sun shores of life. Hmm. I'm teaching about how to stand out in your generation. Lift that hand and say, I'll stand out. By the grace of God, I will stand out. The guy stood out among them. He and Philip, apart from that, the, the rest, useless. That's what one guy cried among them, Nicholas. Nicholas, by the revelations, they said, don't follow the teachings of the Nicolaitans who I hate. God virtually hated him and what he came to do on earth. That will not be your portion. I see significance coming into your life. But watch this. What is it that made Stephen stand out? That's the question I want to answer. What is it that made him so different, that made him leave his mark in the sunshine of life? What is it? What was it about him? Was it because he was handsome? I've just told you that Jesus on the cross didn't look calmly. There was nothing attractive about him. But eventually, so it's not your looks. It's not your school. Nothing. There's one particular thing they said. And Stephen full of something he was filled with what the holy ghost and with what faith i'm talking about content the guy had content huh he carried something in this life to be significant you must be filled with something you must be full of something there must be something inside of you that will make you stand out in your generation unfortunately too many of us spend too much time on the container instead of the content gifty it is stand up look at this beautiful woman come you know sometimes when you are born like this you know, everything seems to work for you. On the outward. Beautiful face. Beautiful everything. And if you are not careful, eh, you will spend all your time thinking that the container is what is important. But container is nothing without content. Can I talk to somebody here? container is this is just a container as beautiful as it is it is nothing until the content is great so you stand there and say i'm a handsome man i'm a handsome man the girls like me you are a fool Huh? I, I'm, I'm so pretty everywhere I go every, everywhere I go the guys are chasing me I, the guy, you, are, you are about to destroy your life this thing is not about the container it's about what is inside and I declare to you be filled with something in your lifetime full of the Holy Ghost and full of faith that is what makes the difference put your hands together and please be seated full content very important so spend time filling your life filling your life with something that will be relevant to the generation spend time investing on your innermost being load yourself be filled that's why jesus said you don't have to make a step until power comes down from you you will receive power when the holy ghost comes upon you you shall be filled with the spirit then you are ready to stand out and do exploits i declare to you, you shall be filled with something this year i say you shall be filled it's a year of the fullness of grace be filled with grace 
be filled with the Holy Ghost and be full of faith. Hallelujah. Be full of something. Look at Acts 8.20. There was a guy who wanted to operate in signs and wonders. And he, he, he went to see the apostles and said, let me give you money so that I can... Then, then Peter just turned to you and said, may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. Look at 21. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Look at the next verse. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord that he may forgive you for such a thought. 23. 23. Uh -huh. Everybody read. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. This is year 23 for you. <laughs> there are people in the church at the year 23, you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. How can you amount to nothing? Peter said you are disqualified. This thing, we don't use bitterness to do it. We don't use bitterness for ministry. We don't use bitterness for anything great on this earth. You better be filled with faith and with the Holy Ghost. Oh, the others are also filled with pride. They are filled with pride. Pride has eaten up on you. On who pride one suddenly bicycle back or water. How can God give you Lincoln Navigator if bicycle can change you? You are full of pride, full of bitterness. How can God exalt you? Oh, but I see the savings rising up. I say, I see the savings rising up. Full of faith. And full of the spirit. That's what makes you stand out in your generation. Oh, we will stand out in our generation. I say we will stand out in our generation. Look, this is not the only description of Stephen. Anywhere he's mentioned in the Bible, there was other description. Let's go. Let's go to verse 8. Verse 5 says he was full of what? NIV, please. He was full of what? Faith and what? Full of. Six, no, let's say says he was full of what? And of the Holy Ghost. By the time we hit verse 8, let's read about him now. The guy's graduating. Now. He started as an usher. Remember, he started as a what? Usher or deacon. Or hostess. <laughs> yeah, hostess. There are some people, they don't want to be hostess. Better be a hostess. It's going to take you far. It's the beginning of elevation. Emmanuel, are you hearing me? It's the beginning of elevation. It's not a, a demotion. Now watch this. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, Perform great wonders and I see you becoming a sign and a wonder. I see you performing great signs and wonders. You will move from seven tables to be a sign and a wonder. Because I read my Bible and my Bible says, The children that the Father has given to me, we are for signs and wonders in this world. I prophesy to you for a sign and a wonder. I speak to you, your lifetime, you'll be a sign and a wonder to this generation. I see you shocking your friends, shocking your enemies, shocking your classmates. But he was 34 in class. They say it doesn't matter. He is full of grace and power. Put your hands together for the Lord. And now he is performing signs and wonder. Can you see the graduation? Can you see the graduation? I don't want to rush it. Next week, you will see another level. The guy was making progress. I see you also making progress in your lifetime. You are moving from glory to glory. From grace to grace. From blessing to blessing. But you must be full of something. Stop concentrating on the container and work on the contents. Stop concentrating on the container. Work on the contents. That is the real you. The inner man. That's the real you. There's too much over emphasis on, look, your mirror. You're always standing in the mirror. 
like it. The Bible says he that looketh intently into the perfect law of liberty. This Bible is our mirror. Instead of looking a physical mirror and admiring the container, start looking at the perfect law of liberty and catch some revelations and be filled with the word and watch what you will become in this life. Hallelujah. The word of God. He that look at it intently into it. Not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer. This man. So here we are. The man has moved from a hostess to a man of signs, wonders, and miracles. May that be your portion. I say, may that be your portion. Now notice that in verse 6, they say he was full of the spirit. Now in verse 8, they say he was full of what? Power. Grace and what? Power. There was development. Listen, you can be filled with the spirit. It's just the beginning. I'm just realizing that there's a difference between being full of the spirit and being full of the power. And I want to show you that. Because most of us, the day you got born again and you were baptized with the Holy Ghost, you were filled with the Holy Spirit. But there's another level. I said there's another level. And that's where you must seek to come to. It is a different level altogether. Can I show you that and we close? Luke 14, verse 1. Look at this. Look for, sorry, look for one. Look for one. Everybody read. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. All right? So where is Jordan? Jordan was where he was what? Baptized. Are, are you getting me? He was baptized in Jordan. So when you are baptized, whether in water or in the Holy Ghost, you will be filled with the Spirit. Level one. Somebody say level one. Uh, how many were in church on Sunday? So we are coming there. Hallelujah. He now at verse one is at level one, filled with what? The Holy Spirit. Then he went into the wilderness, waited on the Lord, and he was what? Tempted by the devil. Remember that one? Came out, he was tempted. P1. P2, P3. If you are the son of God, use your power. Turn this into uh, bread. Uh, what? The stone into bread. Jump. All is P3 tests. And Jesus passed the test with distinction because of the word of God that's inside of him. Then, after passing the test, look at verse 14. Everybody read. And Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. All right? So verse 1, he was filled with the Spirit, but after passing the test, now he begins to operate with what? Power of the Spirit. I see you getting there in the name of Jesus. That's why you need to pass your test too. Pass P1. Pass P2. Pass P3, suddenly power will come upon you. Receive power. Now watch this. When the power, when you return in the power of the spirit, look at what happened. Everybody read. And news about him spread through the whole country. Who am I speaking to? When you are filled with the spirit and with power, suddenly you become news. Oh, I say you become news. I declare to you 2023, may you become news. I say may you become news. May they hear of you in far places and near places. May God make you a sign and a wonder like Stephen and like Jesus Christ. How the Father anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with what? Power. Notice the two. With the Holy Spirit and with what? power and he went about doing good these two combinations it is what will make you stand out in your generation and become a sign and a wonder be filled with the holy ghost and with power stand out and make a difference in jesus name amen hallelujah
stand out. Thank you for listening to Word Explosion with Reverend Simon Ampofo. We believe you've been blessed. For more life-changing messages, please make a date with us on Love FM every Friday morning at 5.30 a.m. We invite you to worship with us at Graceful Chapel, Ahonjo, some meters from Lametto Hotel and directly behind Chariset Hotel. Our Sunday service is at 8.30 a.m. and our midweek service is on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. For more information, please call 0552 Three. Email us at admin at gracefuls.org or visit our website www.gracefuls.org. You can join the Reverend Simon Ampofo page on Facebook. You can also follow Graceful Chapel on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. If you'd like to support this broadcast, you're welcome to do so. Please call us on 0552-505083. Or you can send your monetary support directly to 0244-263882. God bless you as you do so. It's your season of grace. Well, all I'll say is, um, how about that? All right, that was a message uh, from Reverend Simon Ampafu of the Grace Fields International. And um, the message was titled, how, how to Stand Out in Your Generation. How to, how to Stand Out in Your Generation. I pray that um, you're able to stand out in your generation. All right. It's not about the container, but what the container contains. That's what matters. That's um, Reverend Simon Ampo for there. It feels good. Love 99.5 FM. 99.5 FM. Love in the morning on 